Hi everybody, Anna K. Morris here with a quick coaching video for you today. And um, this is one that I've, I've, I've said a few times in my private coaching group, The Reconnect, which if you don't, if you're not familiar with, it's my signature class. It's, I mean, I love it so, I love it so much. If you're watching this and you're in The Reconnect, I love you. They're just, it's the most magical thing that I've ever done. Honestly, I mean, like, you know, Happy Karma Homes is really great and, and having my kids is really great. I, mean, <laughs> I, shouldn't, I shouldn't compare a business to motherhood, sorry. Um, but it, feel, it feels kind of, it, it feels really similar because it's where like I watch women fall in love with themselves and accept themselves. And this is, this is part of that. So um, what I've said in the, in the reconnect and, and um, with private clients is that you actually like the contrast. Okay, so what does that mean? Sorry, Duke is roaming around the house, so we're gonna hear some clickety clacks on the, on the hardwood floors. So we actually like and create the negative things in our lives, the drama in our lives that we say we don't like. We do. So what is that what does that actually look like? What does that actually mean? Right? Um we can only see light when there's darkness, right? Like you see this black picture frame right here. It only looks black against the gray wall, against the cream um, uh, picture. So you actually, like we live in a world of contrast. There's daytime with the sun out. There's nighttime with the black sky and the moon out, right? So the problem is only that we subscribe, we make a judgment. And if you watched yesterday's video, it's called part two, forgiving yourself. Uh, forgive me. Yeah, I think something like that. Forgiving yourself. Um, it's only that we then say something is good or bad. And then we only want the good parts and not the bad parts, right? Rather than just saying like, oh, this is just darkness. And from darkness, I move to lightness. And then when you're in lightness, like you'll move back to darkness. It's just how it is. It's only when we say that it's bad and it's not okay, right? Like it may not feel comfortable. You might not like it. It might be unfamiliar, all these different things. But our, our inability to cope with the hard darkness um, actually limits our ability for joy, okay? So that's really good news if the dogs are on roaming around. Um, that's really, really good news if you are watching this and you are in a period of darkness. Okay, so I'm gonna get I'm gonna give you some happy vibes. When it is the darkest, I believe, and I would say physics is in agreement, right? I'm not a scientist, obviously, um, but there are certain like laws of science and, and of physics is that like you can only like a pendulum swinging on a clock, like a pendulum swings this high over here, it's equal to this high over here. That's the capacity for darkness and lightness, okay? So when I've been in seasons, I'll say seasons, it could be a moment or a day, but sometimes... If you're in a in a season of darkness, you know you know who you are. You know that I'm talking to you. I have been in seasons of darkness, and once I got this concept, it literally changed my life because I could be in the season of darkness. And the concept is this: it's always the darkest before the light. It's always a breakdown before the breakthrough. And as I increase my capacity to handle the darkness. I increase my capacity for joy and love and compassion and affinity and all of the things that I want more of in my life. 
So because I know <clears throat> that they're equal, right, there's always going to be balance in our lives, the dark with the light. As I increase my capacity to be with the darkness and to lean in it, to, to lean into it and to allow myself to feel it. And I'll tell you, today, is it today? Yeah, today I'm two months sober. Uh, I don't have a drinking problem. Uh, I've just chosen to stop drinking. So saying sober sounds really weird and like it's got it's kind of a loaded word. But anyway, I'll use it because people use it. Um, but I'm two months now without drinking. So while I didn't necessarily have what you would call like a problem with alcohol, I certainly used it when I would be feeling more than I wanted to feel, right? Whether it's, it, it's, it could also be joy. Like there were times, like when you're happy, you drink. When you're sad, you drink, right? So it's been really interesting to have the last two months without that as a choice, right? Because I've taken it out. So now when I have these big feelings and, you know, I'm raising, you know, two toddlers right now. Um, so like we, we talk a lot about like these big feelings, like how do you manage that, those? How do you manage how much you feel? And I will always say to feel your feelings, running from them, numbing them out, pretending you don't have them, any of that only prolongs it. It only <laughs> keeps it right there, always able to hook you. And I, while I know I have some control, I also know that there is, um, there's magic in the universe, right? So even the control that I think I have, I don't really know that I do. What I know is that I have free will, and um, I make the best choices that I can with the information that I have at hand. And also there are certain patterns because I've done things a certain way in my life that are really automatic. And if it's ever not feeling good, all there is to do is look and see like, oh, that's just a pattern that I do. Could I choose a different pattern here? It might take some time. I look at myself like a beginner, like a child learning a new skill. Okay, so to loop it back to the concept of like this darkness and lightness, when I was living at Kripalu, I, I think I've mentioned this before, I did a, a one month teacher training. I lived at a former ashram in the Berkshires um, in Massachusetts. It's the most incredible place, not posh, um, but enough and exactly what I needed to go really far inside of myself. And I can remember, I think we checked in on like a Sunday and on Tuesday. So you've been there two nights. Um, there was a girl having like a full on like meltdown, nervous breakdown in the hallway, just hysterically crying and like publicly, which so, as somebody like, I don't know if it's a Southern thing, I'm not sure, but like that was not something I was used to seeing. And when we walked by, the person that I was with was like, feel your, feel your feelings, we're at Kripalu. And I love that because the person that I was with didn't think of it as dramatic like I, I tended to. Um, it was just like, it was just a Tuesday and this girl's having a nervous breakdown and she was just feeling her feelings. And eventually she won't feel like that anymore. She'll feel something different. And that's the beauty of being human is that we are always changing and evolving. And the only problem is when we don't let ourselves be where we are, feel the feelings of the darkness and know and have faith that the light's just around the corner, right? You can only have a rainbow after a huge storm. And sometimes in the storm, you think you'll die. You really, really believe that you will not make it through. And then you do. And then there's this gorgeous rainbow at the end. And when you journal, and this is why I won't stop ever talking about journaling, because I journal every single day, I know and I remind myself and I train myself that the rainbow will always come. It's just part of it. And if it's not a rainbow, it's just beautiful green grass and flowers and unfortunately mosquitoes, but you know, um, 
that after that big storm, there's always the light, there's always the balance. It's how the world works. It's one of those universal laws. So if you are in a period of darkness, know that there is light. And the only thing that's delaying you getting to the light is not wanting to feel the darkness that you're in, okay? It's not wanting to feel that darkness and remember that there's hope and faith on the other side. And if you're in a season of light, of joy, of brilliance, lean into that and savor all of it, knowing that it might not be like that forever. It won't be. And so lean into that. Like I am so savoring the age that my kids are at. Like Jack is turning four in a couple of weeks. Dean will be two in April. Like we are not really sleeping still. Um, and this won't last forever. Like it won't be long before the house is quiet and I'll be wishing for them like running up and down the hallways, like yelling at each other and Dean's like sweet hair and Jack always somehow having like honey or peanut butter on him. And like he, he just grew up overnight and I don't even understand it. And I'm not distracted from it, right? I take so many things out of my calendar so that I can just like be here in this season with them because I know that the trips will be there in the future. The All the things that I love doing that I did before having kids, they're going to be there, right? I only get so long with them. And even though like there are moments of great darkness, especially in the middle of the night when we're not sleeping and we're up again with Dean, um, I know that there's there's light, right? There's light at the end of all of that. Okay, and it's just going to be something different. So hang in there. Know that like with the darkness, there is light. So your journal prompt is tell me a story. Oh, I love this. I love this one. Tell me a story of where I've been in the darkness and how I've come into the light. So here's your journal prompt again. Tell me a story of where I was in the darkness and how I moved into the light. Okay, I love you. I'll see you tomorrow.